Now, the third question is that, um, what do you want to say to the, uh, the people and, uh, around the world uh, who are really reluctant to, to uh, go through a meshless uh, hernia repair? Well, I've been a biomedical engineer for 27 years. I've worked with the FDA. I have registered many medical products. I've worked on operating theater equipment, so I knew what the operating theater was all about. When you're dealing with um, mesh surgery, I knew nothing three months ago. Nothing about hernias, nothing about mesh. Um, my first three friends had a 50% failure rate with mesh, one going through five I mentioned before, one going through two surgeries. Um, that leads to a complication because once a mesh fails, it has to be peeled out of your nerves and skin. Failure can be an intense uh, pain that just never goes away. It can last for years if you don't do anything about it. Meshes, when they first started out, had a coarser pattern, and therefore they would rub the nerves raw and do much damage. Meshes today are a little bit finer, but they still depend upon stuffing the mesh into the hernia opening, that hole that's formed. And if a person has different activity levels or different levels of backing, the mesh can sort of bunch up, and then there's no other way but surgical repair again to get the mesh out, and that can be uh, very stressful. Um, I discovered uh, in my research that the MDR reports, which are medical device reports to the FDA, from doctors and patients were blocked for several years because the mesh manufacturers um, somehow pressured an FDA officer to not record them. And now there is a society in the USA called the Mesh Noma Society to bring to the public the knowledge that mesh has caused quite a bit of harm. And most of the surgeons using it are doing so simply because they've been misinformed. They've been misinformed mostly for profit. The mesh companies want to sell a high priced product. And therefore, as a result, um, I was looking for meshless surgery repair, and there are several doctors all around uh, the USA and Toronto. <clears throat> the Shoulders Hospital in Toronto has been doing it since about 1942. Um, they do a more invasive stitching than Dr. Kang, but they would not take me because of the complication of handling pacemaker and CRTD nice. patients. Mm -hmm. Um, the same applied to all of the other mesh-free surgeons in the USA. They did not want to do anybody but a simple, straightforward surgery. They didn't want to handle any complications. Um, here at, um, I guess this is called the Gippum Hospital. Yes. Yeah. Um, they saw no problem. Stephen called the rep. He came in 30 minutes before surgery checked everything, set everything, we went through surgery, then he reset everything. It was just um, seamless and accurate and trouble free. When you're going to choose a doctor uh, for any type of surgery, you have to remember there are average doctors and there are below average doctors and there are doctors who are way above average. Um, like anything, do you want a doctor that barely passed his test with a C in school? Mm -hmm. Or do you want a doctor who was an A-plus student and who creates new surgical procedures and monitors the results of his patients, yeah. even writing the noteworthy textbook on the subject and trains other doctors? Do you want that kind of doctor? Well, of course you do. You don't want to go through uh, surgery, even a small surgery, without someone who is truly the most skilled in his field. Okay, right. Okay, uh, thank you very much um, for uh, this interview, and uh, uh, the answer is very uh, uh, I mean, detailed, so we are really happy with it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Zach. Okay. Now the interview is over. <laughs>